Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hello and welcome to Teach Me Tech, a very serious show that's all about technology and running your business in the cloud. I'm your host, Laurel Gray, and I'm joined today by the wonderful Damien Thompson. Uh, now, Damien is the CEO and founder of MinuteIt.com, which is a meeting productivity software that we will talk about in another episode. Um, and he also is sort of just got a lot of experience around meetings and web conferencing. And so we're here to pick his brain today on a tool called Zoom. What is Zoom? You're going to find out very shortly. Here is what we're going to cover on this episode. Firstly, why you might need a web conferencing system in your business. Secondly, what is the best practice for running web meetings? Setting up your account and installing Zoom. Understanding the software and configuring your account. Setting up your first video meeting or webinar. Inviting other users to join in on the fun. Running your first video meeting or webinar. Integrations and getting more out of Zoom. We always like to talk about that. And finally, other advanced Zoom services. Woo woo, let's get started. Thank you so much for coming back. Thanks for having me again, Laurel. This is awesome. So Damien, essentially, like I mentioned before, has got a lot of experience in the web conferencing space, and he also is a bit of an expert on meetings. So I'm here to really pick his brain mm. in the first part of this episode on, look, it's kind of the same questions that I always ask. Why are we going to need a best-of-breed meeting uh, productivity system for your business or a web conferencing productivity system? Yeah, well, Laurel, we, we live in a global world these days mm. uh, where people can't be in the same room to meet all the time. Mm. Uh, airfares are expensive. Uh, we need ways to continue doing business. Uh, web conferencing is a fantastic way to actually do that so that you can have face-to-face -face meetings with people without being physically present in the room. Mm. And so you recommend that organisations should really pick one tool to use rather than, like, let's say built-in video conferencing. Yeah, that's right. I, I mean, in, in our business, we've, we've trialled uh, several different platforms, um, and we found that working with a dedicated platform like Zoom, uh, you end up with better quality video. Uh, some of the, the buffering issues that you have uh, don't exist, uh, and the co quality of calls is uh, superior. Mm. Excellent. So, I mean, are there any other advantages to using uh, like a best of breed tool like that only does video conferencing? Well, the advantage is that you end up working with a provider who specializes in that specific area rather than being a, a generalist that might have other services that they're developing. Uh, they focus just on video conferencing. Mm. Okay, so it doesn't have any like chat functionality or anything like that. It's just exclusively for video. Zoom also has chat functionality that you can use within the, the Zoom meeting. So when you're actually in a video conference or a webinar, you can still engage in chat mm -hmm. during that conference, but not outside of it. Mm. Okay. And I don't know, I really, in my business, I use Google Hangouts and I use Skype. Yep. So what would be the advantage of picking another tool outside of that that some people might not be familiar with? Yeah, look, Zoom and, uh, is, a, is a tool that has built-in apps uh, developed for uh, Android or iOS uh, t oh, uh, phone cool. devices and tablets as well. So not only can you conduct video conferencing on a PC, but you can also use it to, to share video, share screen uh, from your smartphone as well. Okay, so you could be on the bus or on the ferry and still conduct your meetings as per normal. Exactly, or in an airport, as I like to do. Mm. Now, would there be any other advantages? Like, does it have built-in recording or anything like that? Certainly, Zoom has built-in recording where you can record the, the, the video or just the audio uh, that's Ooh. available with uh, your meeting. Uh, you also have access to uh, telephone services. So where you might have to use uh, VoIP services, so video over uh, IP services through Hangout 
uh, Hangouts or Skype for Business. Zoom enables you to use dedicated phone numbers that you can dial into as well. Uh -huh. And they mm -hmm. also have as a premium service toll-free calling. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so there are a lot of advantages to Zoom. Um, and I mean, I guess how does it compare? Because there, there are quite a lot of the paid ones like Citrix um, for webinars. They tend to be a little bit more pricey, right? They can be a bit more pricey, uh, and uh, some of them are, are heavier solutions. Uh, uh, okay. So you might need dedicated infrastructure set up within your conferencing room, mm. whereas uh, Zoom allows you to use any PC, any tablet, any smartphone to conduct your video conferencing. Okay, so it's sort of hitting that little sweet spot. Small and medium businesses can use it to collaborate effectively with customers or internally within their teams without going overboard and having really exorbitant... That's exactly annual right. Annual costs. Okay. Awesome. That really helps. I think I'm getting sold. <laughs> this always happens on Teach Me Tech. I find out about a new tool and then I spend the whole afternoon testing it out. Oh. Um, so one of the things that I'm really curious about is you're an expert in running meetings. Mm -hmm. So I don't really know what the etiquette is around video conferencing or if there are any special rules that I should be following that I don't. I mean, I load up Skype for a meeting and I'm just, hello, what's happening? I have stuff in the background. Yeah, you know. it's, it's, it's a really good question. And there are some very funny videos that are available uh, parodying people that have attended video conferencing <laughs> meetings. A couple of really useful tips. Uh, when you join a meeting, make sure that your video is turned off. The last thing you want to do is be sitting there in a, a dressing gown at, late at night when you're, you're doing a video conference with another country and they're able to see you. So turn off your video to start with unless you, you're in an environment where you, you're happy to share your video. Mm. Uh, also, it's, it's very good practice when you're running a meeting, particularly a web conferencing meeting where there might be a lot of people attending, to actually do a bit of a roll call uh, and make mm. sure you mark an attendance when people are joining the meeting. Most video conferencing systems will, will have a chime uh, when people actually join in. Uh, so make sure you just pause and get the, the person to announce themselves. Uh, particularly if you're sharing video conferencing facilities or web conferencing facilities with other users, the last thing you want to do is have people joining that meeting room that aren't supposed to be there. Okay. Um, all right. Are there, I mean, are there any other little best practice tips or tricks? Yeah, uh, certainly making sure that you uh, test the, the quality of the audio, uh, make sure that mm, you speak up mm. uh, and you're close to the, the, the recording device is always useful. Uh, often video and uh, audio can fade in and out if you move away from the recording source. Uh, mm. So that's a very good idea. When you're running a web conferencing off a smartphone, then I'd also recommend using the headphones uh, that are plugged into the device, which uses the microphone as well. You just end up with a better quality result. Mm, that's a really good idea. Um, I have a, a little bit of a strange question. Is it okay if I ask? Certainly. Kind of around like best practice. Um, so if you're going to be recording a meeting, I've always wondered, do you have to ask permission before you start recording? Like, do you have to actually put it in writing to the person? Um, let's say it's with a client and you plan on recording it so you remember what they say. Um, do you have to put it in writing? I will be recording this call or? I think it's always good practice to uh, advise people during the call uh, that you're going to be recording it for mm -hmm. uh, historical purposes or just to make sure that you're able to transcribe or take notes after the meeting. Uh, but you don't have to ask their permission up front. Mm. Okay. Um, I don't know, because you're the meeting expert. I'm sure there's some kind of like something in minute it where you can put in this meeting will be recorded and make sure you wear your best outfit or <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd certainly recommend including that in the notes mm. or the description section that uh, you're going to be using web conferencing or mm. uh, video conferencing mm. services yeah cool all right anything else uh, look, there, there, there are some really useful paid features and, and free features that are available within uh, Zoom. Uh, so when you're signing up, you should be aware that uh, creating your meetings, you're allowed to run uh, minutes, uh, meetings up to 40 minutes in duration, mm. uh, which if you're planning on running longer meetings, then you might need to consider the paid for version of, of Zoom. But they have mm. a really uh, very good free version uh, that you can access the majority of functionality, the only limitation being the time frame that you can run a meeting for. Mm. 
Well, that brings up a really good point. I know for me, American, right? So I can just talk forever. But is there a standard amount of time that you should be spending in online meetings before it starts to get really uncomfortable? Because it's not like in a in a face to face meeting where you can say, "Oh, I'm just going to go and use the bathroom, mm. and I'll be back." Like it's a bit strange on a video call. Look, I I, I like to keep my meetings to a maximum of an hour. Mm. The reason being that any longer than an hour, people start to lose attention. They start to lose focus. Uh, they might have other things that they need to do. So typically uh, between half an hour and an hour is the maximum that you'd want to pe keep people uh, in a meeting for. Mm. Particularly online as well, uh, there can be a lot of distractions uh, in the environment around you. So making sure that you're in a quiet place free of distractions is, is a good idea as well. Mm. How about getting rid of people that you know they're typing and responding to emails on the other end of the call? Yeah. To continue enjoying this presentation, download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today.